Happy birthday to Blade and Soul! Hey everyone, Parallel here, and welcome to another Blade and Soul video. Let's take a look at the first year anniversary event that's going on right now. And it's pretty crazy to think this game has been out for a year already. Uh, time definitely flies. And this game has changed a lot over the last year, that's for sure. And in fact, it seems like recently in a lot of the patches, including this first year anniversary patch, there's been a lot of quality of life improvements that have been going on. Seems like the developers are actually really listening to the community feedback and making a lot of positive changes. Um, so it's a good trend to see. Although I have to say the game is definitely not without its faults. You know, a year in, the, the population is definitely less than what it was at launch. But uh, that's pretty common for most MMOs these days, particularly Korean MMOs. And, you know, overall, this seems to be a pretty po profitable MMO for NCSoft. Their financials have been pretty positive. So... I think overall, a very successful year for this MMO, so uh, congrats to uh, Blade and Soul. Now let's take a look at this actual event and see what the rewards are. Now there's actually a free gift you get for logging in during this event, so I highly recommend it, even if you're a free-to-play player, definitely log in uh, within the time period of this event, which is actually from January 18th through February 8th. So the next three weeks, you log in, you get a free gift, so we'll be taking a look at that straight away. And there's also a event going on where you can collect anniversary coins and get some rewards for doing so. So we'll take a look at those as well. There's uh, so also some other nice changes in the patch that I kind of want to quickly, uh, quickly go through. Um, some improvements to a couple of systems that are actually quite good. Uh, and it's these kind of improvements I really like to see. That really makes me think that you know developers are listening to the community, and in particular the North American community, which is actually very rare. A lot of Korean MMOs, it seems like North American concerns never really make it to the developers, but it seems like this game is actually finding its stride and and, and really uh, catching on. So, um, all right, so let's go in here. Let's, first things first, let's take a look at this free reward that you get, all right? So all you have to do is log in during the event, and there will be a item in the Hongmoon store. So if you pull up the Hongmoon store, there is the first anniversary festival gift. You can claim this once per account. Free-to-play players can get this. Everyone can get this. So, you know, even if you've been, you know, haven't logged into Blade and Soul for a while, you might want to log in just to get this uh, gift. And you can see, let me pull up the details on it here. There's actually quite a bit here. This is actually a pretty solid free gift. In particular, it even includes in a costume. So let's take a look at all of this stuff. So you get, yeah, 10 Hongmoon keys, big deal. 10 Unsealing Charms, yeah. But it does give you two of the anniversary coins. This is the currency for the event. So we'll take a look at what you can buy with those. But it also gives uh, glasses. First anniversary cake hat. And uh, it also gives you a cupcake. A nice thing about this is if you eat it, it gives you a title. It gives you the Trail Trailblazer title and a first of many achievement, so that's pretty cool. Um, not sure how many achievement points that is, but if you have a particular character you're looking to grind some achievement points, probably good to eat that cake on that character. Um, gives you some fireworks, and then it gives you a costume. Now this is pretty good. Uh, free costume in a free-to-play game like this, that's, that's actually pretty impressive. A lot of them are pretty stingy with the free costume, so we'll take a look at that. Um, and it also gives a free headwear for a female and a free headwear for male. So let's go ahead and just uh, quickly take a look at all of these items here. I'll go ahead and put them all on my character so we can take a look here. All right, so there we go. This is the... Yeah, what is this called? It's just called Alice. I believe this was the winner of a costume contest that happened a few months back. Um... So basically, it's kind of your you know Alice in Wonderland type theme outfit, and there it is. There it is on Yoon. Pretty nice looking, I have to say. It definitely has the Alice in Wonderland vibe to it. It's got a really huge bow in the back. I kind of like these chain danglies on the side. That kind of those actually kind of remind me of like I don't know. I'm getting like Kingdom Hearts. Some, kind of similar to the, the theme in uh, Kingdom Hearts, I think, which is cool. Let's take a look at the Lin. There you go. That's much more traditional. That definitely looks like an Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, outfit looks very reminiscent of that movie. Here is the Gon, and let's take a look at the Jin. 
So it looks pretty similar in all the different races except for the Lin, which has the more uh, more traditional look there. Let's um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. I like it. Um, and it's free. That's the best part. Now, the other thing you'll see is that uh, this is actually a new hairstyle as well. So the the, um, the Alice Ribbon will actually change your hairstyle. Let's zoom in a little bit here. To be uh, kind of like a ponytail with a big bow. That's pretty cool. It's nice to have a completely different hairstyle. Unique. Uh, a lot of the hats in the game do change your hairstyle, but it's usually to one of the existing hairstyles. I believe this one is uh, unique for this outfit. So that's a nice little addition. And let's go ahead and switch over to the uh, butterfly mask for the male, see what that looks like. I mean, it's it's kind of cool. It's a little bit weird looking. But it kind of fits with the outfit, I think. And this is the outfit on males as well, so might as well go through these. Yeah, I'm definitely getting the kind of a Kingdom Hearts vibe out of it. But of course, that did have Alice in Wonderland in that game, but it's got the spade tattoo on it. That's pretty cool. It's got the stopwatch. I like it. Dangly stopwatch there for the, from the rabbit. That's cool. That looks pretty cool. I like the mask on the Lin Mail. He's got a couple of clocks as well, but they're not dangly. But nice. It's it's a nice little outfit there. And it's totally free. So yeah, you log it in, get it for free. Let's um, take a look at the cake, because I believe when I put the Alice wig on, it overrode the cake. So there's the cake hat. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Pretty funny little hat. has a nice one on it. I like it. That seems to go with the glasses more. The glasses and the cake hat are not really part of the Alice thing. There you go. That's the Alice outfit. So that's that's really nice. Pretty solid free gift, I have to say. Definite thumbs up on that. So log in in the next three weeks. You know, even if you're a free-to-play player, make sure to claim this. Um, lots of good stuff in there. Definitely worth it. Now, there is also a event going on as part of this. Uh, yeah, as part of the anniversary, there is this event going on where you can actually grind for more of these anniversary coins. And then you can buy various rewards in the um, uh, Dragon Express. So let's quickly take a look at those as well. Because I'm actually quite curious. Oh, that pet aura. I'll go through that uh, as well. There's a change there with pets um, that is actually a very nice change. We'll, we'll cover that in just a moment when we go through some of the patch notes. But first, let's take a look at the event items you can get with these uh, anniversary coins. Now, right off the bat, top on the list, holy crap, a new Hong Moon hexagonal diamond. Uh, flawless, I don't believe there's been a flawless hexagonal um, Hong Moon diamond released yet. We've gotten, you know, we've gotten the um, the Periodot, we've gotten the Ruby, we've gotten, you know, the Citrine, all the rest of them. But I don't think we've ever gotten a diamond yet. And we can see right here it is a 35 attack power diamond. That's pretty sweet. And uh, that's a huge, that's a huge upgrade. I think anyone serious, any hardcore players in the game are definitely going to want to grind this one out. And if I'm not mistaken, um, yeah, let me just quickly look at the patch notes just to make sure I'm doing this right. But this can be, um, yes, for a limited time, you'll be able to transmute this to a sparkling, uh, what is it, Hep heptagonal diamond. So you can up actually upgrade this to a heptagonal diamond. That is insane. But it, that is going to take an additional amount of coins. And then it will consume also the Hong Moon Sparkling Hexagonal Diamond. So just real quick here, you can see this diamond will go for 160 coins. That's going to be quite a bit of farming. Not undoable. Not, it's, it's not too far out of reach, but that's quite a bit of grinding. Um, but still, that's not bad. I'm sure every hardcore player will definitely want to pick this up during the event. That is, I'm sure, an upgrade for many, many people. And just looking at the patch notes here, it does say it will take 240 more of the coins to upgrade this to the heptagonal version. And it doesn't say what the stats are, so I'm curious how much attack power that gives you. Probably at least another 5 to 10, maybe. Um, 
but that's another 240 on top of the 160. Now that would be extremely difficult uh, to get that many. You're going to be grinding a lot of dungeons every day in order to get the, uh, that amount of coins, unless you want to, uh, you know, pay to win on it. But uh, I think you can. Um, we'll take a look at some of the new things in the Hamwin store. There were some additions, but I believe there is a way to actually. Uh, there's some packages that you can get these coins out of in the store, but um, but you can grind for these. And in fact, let me just quickly run through here. There are, uh, the best way to do this is probably to do your uh, daily challenge. And yeah, I'll go through the rest of the rewards in a second, but let's just see how, how many of these coins would be realistic here to get. So you can uh, get three from the, the uh, daily challenge. And then you also get between one and three for all of the Hong Moon, or not Hong Moon, sorry, all of the Elite Silver Frost dungeons. So just looking at the chart here, it looks like the easier dungeons give you one per daily, uh, for the daily for each of those. Um, the medium dungeons give you two from the daily quest, and then the top three, Desolate Tomb, Ivan Drake, Citadel, and Naryu Foundry, all give three of these coins. And you could, so you could run each of those dungeons. I mean, that'd be a lot of dungeon running, but you can get quite a bit of coins that way. Um, let's see if I can add up here. One, two, three, four, nine, four is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Looks like if you did every dungeon, you could get 18 coins that way, plus three from here. So you're looking at 21. And there's also this little daily quest that pops up. And I'm actually going to do this real quick. Uh, just to see what is involved. It's pretty easy. It probably take about five minutes to do it. And that will get you another one. So you're looking at what? 22-ish coins per day if you really, really grind. That's not bad. I mean, that's if you. I mean, if you're real dedicated, you could probably get. I, I mean, I mean, you've got three weeks, right? So that's you know, 21 days. Let me just do a quick calculation here. So three weeks, so we got 21 days, and if you get 22 per day, that would equal 460 coins. That's definitely enough. Uh, yeah, that's that's enough to do the heptagonal. So if you really want that heptagonal, you got to grind for it, but it is possible. And if you missed out a little bit, you could probably throw a few Hong Moon coins into the store to get those uh, to get the rest of the coins that you need. All right, so that is how you get the coins. Um, and I'll do this daily quest here shortly. Let's just finish looking at the rest of the rewards. But that's definitely the top reward. If you're going to go for anything, definitely go for that. You can also get uh, forging orbs, um, which is nice. Uh, if you can't run Naryu Foundry, you know, these are good. These also cost the same as the diamond. I, I don't know. I'd still say get the diamond. This is a new item. It uh, was definitely an upgrade, and uh, this is probably what you'd want to go for. But Forging Orbs is probably a good thing. You know, if you're already in your Legendaries and you want to upgrade, that's good. Sacred Oils, also another uh, rare upgrade material. Um, these are only 120. You also need some of these Black Rose Feathers, but that's a pretty trivial amount, honestly. Ten, ten runs of uh, um, Heaven's Mandate is nothing. You probably can even get in less than that. But if you are just going for the cosmetic items, you can get this outfit here called Silk and Splendor. Let's take a look at this one. This one is also for 120 coins. So here, let's, yep, let's take a look at this outfit. It looks pretty nice. They definitely have been adding a lot more detail to the outfit. I definitely like that these are not, at least I don't think this is just a recolor. This actually looks like a new geometry, which is good to see. Seems like a lot of the outfits recently have been recolors, but this is definitely unique. And also the that Alice in Wonderland, that was also definitely unique. So a couple of new outfits right there. Um, okay, here is the Lynn version. We'll rotate around. Again, the Lynn version looks quite a bit different, but the other ones look similar. There's the Gone version. Has a lot of dangly bits, really long sleeves there. That's, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Those will be flopping all over the place when you're fighting, that's for sure. I mean, you can already see they flop around, so. But, um, but yeah, a pretty nice outfit if you're looking for that. You can get that for 120 coins. If you can't make it all the way up to the diamond, you know, maybe that'd be a good thing to pick up. 
Um, one thing I'm mousing over it here, it says unable to trade. That is very, very unfortunate. Uh, I like it much better when usually the event outfits are tradable as long as you use those uh, tickets that allow you to trade across your account. Um, so that's a little bit unfortunate. And in fact, let me quickly check uh, the Hawmoon store. I wonder if that... Uh, is this one? Yeah, see this one you can you can uh, trade the Alice outfit. So that's good. You could claim this on any of your characters if you're worried and then you can always trade it later for six of the outfit stamps. So that's nice. In fact, that's one of those features I, I, I should mention that they did add in the last year is those outfit delivery stamps which allow you to trade outfits across your account. And I'm quite sure, I'm pretty sure that uh, Babeltron said that was in direct feedback to North America, um, you know, more uh, North American requests. So that's actually really nice. Uh, I wish uh, more free, free to play. I wish uh, Black Desert did that for sure. That'd be nice to be able to trade costumes, even with a, you know a small fee for those um, those stamps. But still good. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the rest of the rewards here. Just unfortunately, you can't trade that outfit. Um, so just be aware you'll have to do you'll have to earn the coins on the character you want this outfit on because you can't trade it. That kind of uh, that's kind of a bummer. Um, you can get a Tykin skin for eighty, not bad. Uh, Flower of Lament also for eighty. Legendary Jam, ham, uh, jam Hammer for 80. Mysterious Crystal for 40. Eh. I don't know if I'd recommend these. Probably better to save up for something better, but you can get an ex excellent experience charm for 35. Now your tablet for 30. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't get would do that. Um, and then a Bruiser Charm, Hung Moon Instant Revival Charm, and Fortune Potion for the one. So whatever you have left over, you can get Fortune Potions. A little bit unfortunate. I was kind of hoping uh, it would have been nice to see some elements in there for upgrades. Um, scrolling down here, these ones are from the, the winter event that just ended. But I did like that you could get the Hong Moon or the element powders for the one uh, for one of the tokens. That would be nice if that had been here, but it's not. So I'd say if you're going to go in for this event, definitely go all the way and at least go for like 120 of these. You know, do at least a few dungeons a day, do the uh, daily quest. You know, if you do the daily challenge, plus the dungeons you completed to do the daily challenge, you should probably have enough, I would think, to get this outfit, um, you know, during the time that the event is running. Um, uh, actually, I should mention one other thing. So those are the rewards, but one other way to get coins on top of doing the dungeons and the daily is the daily dash. Uh, you can get uh, coins from here. In fact, for every uh, complete, every time you complete the board and go back to the start, you will get, it looks like, 20 coins. That's pretty good. So actually, you could even do a little bit less grinding. Like, I mean, you could probably complete this maybe two to three times, I would say. Maybe once a week on a free-to-play account uh, for a premium account. If you land on one of these uh, premium squares, you could... Uh, um, potentially get quite a few coins that way if you get lucky. So that's pretty nice. That definitely would cut down on the grind because 20 is quite a bit. Um, yeah, that's quite a bit of coins. So that's nice. That's another way you can get them. Um, just looking through here to see if anything else has changed. Doesn't look like a whole lot has changed except for you can get the pouches. Uh, and we'll take a look at this pouch because you do get that from the daily quest. So let's do that. But you, there are a couple squares you can land on to get 10 pouches, so that's nice. Um, I don't see too much else. Again, only like one square with a venture token. That's a little bit, uh, a little bit stingy, I have to say, on the venture tokens. And in fact, I landed on this premium square earlier and got the uh, venture token reward or I got the uh, surprise prize that used to give a venture token, and this time it didn't give a venture token. It gave a, um, this thing right here, it gave a icy treat chest. So if anyone's out there, if you have premium and you're doing the daily dash, uh, just be aware if you get the, if you land on one of the squares and you get the surprise prize, you actually get icy treat chest now instead of a, used to get the uh, sparkling uh, venture token, which was actually nice because that's quite a few, uh, quite a few, um, uh, Hong Kong coins. So, yep. So there's the changes there to the daily dash. So that's good. That will help you for sure complete the, the uh, you know, complete the grind for the event, getting those rewards. So that will help out a lot. All right. So that is the event. That is the rewards. That's how you earn the coins. Let's actually do the daily quest. So when you log in, you will see a daily quest pop up 
for the one year anniversary. And let's see here. So yeah, so you get the pouch and one free coin from doing this. So let's go ahead and do this quest. It is very, very easy to do. Um, oh yeah, and uh, while I'm here in uh, Zyway, I wanted to take a look. See, they have the nice uh, decorations going on here. Probably saw this in the background while I was talking there, but um, yeah, they did a nice little job here decorating. Let's go ahead and hide the UI and just look around. Nice job decorating everything. They got uh, <laughs> they got some nice decorations. Got a cute little dragon up here. That's kind of cute. That's like a uh, Kind of like a Chinese looking dragon, but in cartoon form. Quite adorable. But they got all kinds of balloons. They got the happy anniversary going on. Good stuff. Oh, there's a big uh, hot air balloon up there with uh, streamers coming off. Nice looking. Nice little decorations in Zyway. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. All right, so. Oh wait, here's someone in the Alice outfit. Oh, they're running away. I was gonna take a look, but that's okay. I think you gotta get enough preview off of the, uh, off of the store. So yeah, I didn't want to claim it just yet. I'm actually not sure. I actually really like how it looks on the lens, so I might actually claim it on my lens. So I'm not sure I want to claim it on this character just yet. But hopefully that preview I gave will give you an idea of what it looks like in all the different races. But first thing, let's take a look at this quest. Now for this quest. It is very easy to do, but and so even at a low level, you'll be able to do this. You just have to go back to uh, Viridian Coast and go over to uh, Jade Stone. And we'll do that now and take a look at what is involved. It's basically you just have to do three very low level uh, tasks uh, and you'll be able to do that in just probably just a few minutes uh, with just some... Uh, um, you know, teleporting around, you'll be able to complete it quite quickly. And let's take a look at Jade Stone Village. I believe the patch notes did mention they put some decorations here as well. And I haven't done this yet, so... Let's take a look. Oh yeah, I see some decorations right here. Here, let's do this. Let's uh, hide... Here we go, let's go over here, a bunch of people in the uh, Wonderland outfits. There's uh, Linz in the outfits. Wow, everyone's got the outfits on. <laughs> That's funny. Everyone's got the outfits. Well, hey, it's the anniversary. I guess everyone got a free outfit. You know, free-to-play players, everyone, they get it. That's uh, that's really cool. It's a good giveaway. But there you go. There's, I think, almost all the different races there. We've got the the Jin. There's a Gon that just ran in. A couple of Lin down in the front. There's all the different races. Good stuff. Oh, wait, I just saw this up in the distance. Check that out. Happy one-year anniversary, and there's a big Ferris wheel. Wow, that's pretty cool. And there's that little dragon floating with the balloons. <laughs> I like it. But yeah, and there's this decoration right here. Let's take a look at this. There you go. Happy anniversary. Uh, that's cool. I like it. I'm digging it. All right, so the first task you need to do for this daily quest is over here. Uh, what is this place called? The uh, Plague, what is it? this thing called? Plague Heart? Plague Hollow, that's it. Yep, got to go over to Plague Hollow. And if you want to, you can always pick up the daily quest. I don't even know if it's probably not even worth it to do the daily quest if you're a high level player. All those um, low level quest rewards are pretty uh, trivial, so. But, yep, all you got to do is run over here. And it says we need to get the Quiverstone Chi from... Let's go ahead and just pull this up here. Yep, you need to pick up all these different Chi's. And, uh, like I said, they're just all very easily obtainable from the low-level areas. Um, in fact, we should just be able to run through all of this and ignore all of these guys. I mean, if you're just trying to do this quickly... You know, you could blow through these real fast. All right, go ahead and form up. A dynamic quest. Yep, pretty easy. Let's see if we get it. Yes, we do. There is the Plague Heart Chi. We got it. 
Acquired taste secret. Ooh, we got a recipe. Yippee. So there is one chi down. Now the next one, I believe, is probably going to be one of the harder ones to get as far as time is concerned because you have to kill this outdoor, one of the outdoor uh, world bosses. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay. Yep, let's make sure to claim that Viridian Coast reward. That's real valuable. So let's head right over to, uh, yeah, the next area where it is you have to kill that one, uh, the Jiganura, which is that Ploggle frog guy that goes around in the uh, that lake area. I'm forgetting the name of the area. I'll look at here on the map in a second. But uh, it is one of those outdoor bosses. And, and given there's going to be like a high level players camping this thing, it might be hard to get um, credit for it. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, what is the name of this place? Croker Lagoon. All right. Oh, is that him? There he is, Jigunura. Haha. -ha. Um, yeah, I want to make sure at least. No, oh, I think that person just missed it, but probably only need to get a couple hits on it to get credit uh, if you're a high level player anyway. Well, that's cool, but yeah, if you're... That might take a little while, I think, if it's heavily camped, although it doesn't look too bad. His spawn rate's pretty fast, so I mean, you might just stand here for a little while waiting for it, but it shouldn't be too big, too big of a deal. All right, so we got his chi, and now finally we just have to head over to... Um, yeah, Gloomdross Forest. This one is in the Dream Drift, that little mini instance there. What's the closest? Tanjay Kilns, okay. Let's head on over there. Now, I'll be curious to see on the video how long this actually takes. I mean, like I said, I would expect it to take somewhere around five minutes. Shouldn't be too bad. Um... And once we're done, we'll take a look at that pouch uh, in detail, see what the rewards are from the pouch. Um, yeah, and go from there. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way to get over there. If you want to do this quest, you could also talk to this guy here, get the uh, Root of All Evil quest, which is the quest for that zone. Again, probably not worth it, but you know, if you are doing this at a lower level, um, since these all are all, you know, level 15 to 20-ish type areas, you should have no problem doing this uh, quest as a lower level to at least participate in the event. Um, the lower level dungeons, unfortunately, won't give you the coins, but you can still do the daily. And if you're going to do it, you might as well pick up those other uh, daily quests and complete them at the same time. They're all in the same instance. But yeah, so far the anniversary event's looking pretty good. New new diamond, new Hamoon diamond for your character to upgrade your attack power. New, um, you know, really nice free gift. So I have to say, it looks pretty good. Now I believe this first chi you can get from... You can, I think it can drop from any of these guys. Yep. Just kill a couple of the random creatures here and you can get the Gnarlwood chi. And then just head over into the middle area of the zone. There's that uh, a couple of those little um, sprites floating around. And then you can kill them for the final piece. And complete the daily, and we'll take a look at it. But yeah, one year anniversary. That's pretty crazy. What do you guys think? You guys all still playing Blade and Soul or interested to check it out? I... Definitely play a lot less now than I used to, but I still hop in, you know, when a new patch comes out and things. Um, I still hop in, do videos, check out the new content, and I still enjoy it. Uh, the combat is still excellent. Uh, and in fact, something I'm very much looking forward to that they announced. Let's kill this guy. So you just need to kill those three guys, get his chi. There you go. The daily is done. Now it says, conduct day of choosing rituals. So we, I think we have to head back to Jade Stone. So let's go ahead and do that. But yeah, what I was saying is they announced they're going to have a 64-bit client coming out in February. So that is awesome. I've really been looking forward to that. Um, that... That is another thing I really like to see. Just like, you know, like in Star Trek Online when they added the new lighting engine. 
I like it, you know, now they're adding the 64-bit client. I really like it when, uh, you know, uh, you know, MMO companies invest in their engine, it's particularly these games that are old that have been out for so many years. Uh, it's nice to see them investing and in optimizing their engine. And Blade and Soul definitely needs it. Um, it uh, definitely struggles when you have lots of players on the screen. Um, anything more than six, the normal six you have in your dungeons, like in any of the outdoor 24-man zones, Killing the bosses there is like a slideshow. You just basically always have to end up turning, you know, all the other players off, or you just can't even get reaction time. Um, but I have high hopes that the 64-bit client will improve that, hopefully substantially. Um, that'd be great. So where is this? Somewhere? Is it just this thing? Okay. So that was the ritual. Put some, uh, I guess, some incense in there. All right, here it is. There we go, first anniversary coin and a pouch. So there's the coin, cool. And here is the pouch, let's take a look at it. Uh, let's see, you can get uh, factions insignias. Oh, you will get faction insignias, 100% chance, one through five, fortune potions, some refining stones. So that's good, those are all upgrade materials for your Hongmun weapon, so that will help. Um, so it looks like a percentage chance for more anniversary coin. Um, bundle, Bruiser Charm, Heroic Friendship, Naryu, Ordinary, Excellent Experience Charm, Hongwon Instant Revival Charm, Naryu Silver. Uh, not super impressive. You can get a Sealed Forging Orb, probably super low chance. Special Hongwon XP Charm, again, probably super low chance. I was kind of hoping the first anniversary coin would be at least one more guaranteed. That way you could get two a day from doing the daily. Um, but let's go ahead and open it, see what we get. Okay, we got an ordinary experience charm. Got some faction, two faction insignias, two refining stones, and a fortune potion. So good stuff. I mean, the default rewards are not bad, but uh, yeah, those higher rewards I'm sure are extremely rare. So I would not count on getting those. But yeah, pretty cool. Oh wow, that person dinged. Cool. Congrats. Um, so that is how the event works. Now... Um, I did want to take a look at some of the uh, patch notes as well, because there were some really nice changes in here. Um, let me go and just pull it up here. I'll just pull this up on the side. Uh, and then after the patch notes, I do want to take one look again at the Hongmoon store to see what has uh, what the new additions are. Because it says they've added some new outfits to the Hongmoon store, just you know for the anniversary event, just regular outfits you can buy. And uh, I also want to see what the, uh, there are a few um, p uh, packages that they've added uh, that include some of those an um, uh, anniversary coins in them. And I want to see how much those are going for as well. All right, so as far as the patch notes go, we pretty much covered all of the event. Honestly, this is not a big patch as far as uh, content goes. There's no new dungeons or anything like that. But just a lot of good quality of life changes that I thought I'd mention. Um, now, this is a really good change here, guys. This uh, is pretty fantastic. They changed how weapon skinning works. So, you know, it used to be when you would uh, do your uh, weapon skin, when you alter appearance... Yeah, see? Okay, so yeah, let's take a look at this. Um, when you used to be when you would apply appearance to your weapon, whatever you applied to it would be destroyed. You can never get it back. So if you ever changed weapons or anything along those lines, it was lost. Or if you ever put another appearance on top of the one that was there, it would destroy what was there previously. Kind of a very punishing system. It's basically if you you'd have to just buy it, you know, once. Even if you like, even the weapon skins that you would buy in the store, they'd be the same way. You'd use them once, and that was it. You could, you know, if you ever change weapons, if you ever want to change the look in the future, that last previous appearance was lost. Now with this new change, there's now a system where you can. Uh, get your item that you used to change the appearance, you can get that back. Um, and I'm kind of curious. So, alter appearance, separate appearance. So, it does cost money. Let's just do this. So if I separate, it's only one silver. It's not bad. 
An appearance change is not available for the equipped items. Do you want to unequip? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's unequip it. Let's see how this works. I hope this doesn't destroy my weapon. Removal complete. I got my pirate bangle back. Nice. That's really nice, guys. So now if I want to add it back on, I can go boom. Okay, I just wasted 60 silver, but that's okay. It was for science. Um, alter the appearance. And it puts it back on. That is awesome, guys. Don't you agree? That is a really good change. That would actually make me almost consider, like, buying some of the weapon skins, maybe, even. Because knowing that you can always get it back. And there it is. See? It still has the uh, old pirate look. Which I actually likes. It kind of goes with the color scheme of that I'm going for on this character, so I like that a lot. But that is nice, man. What a good change. Now, as part of this change, they even did something... I think they went above and beyond on this, because what they did is they actually resent out to everyone who bought a Founder Pack, they resent out the Heavy Metal skin. So even if those people, you know, for way, way back, used their Heavy Metal skin and, you know, ended up losing it for another appearance, they resent this out to everybody who bought a Founder's Pack. So that is really cool. I think that is above and beyond, and I really give them credit for that one. So you can... They just sent it out free. You could actually claim this on a different character now if you want, if you still have the old appearance. That is fantastic. Really uh, really good uh, gesture there from, from NCSoft. So I like that a lot. And now you can, you know, if you put that on your weapon, you can always take it off again. So that's really cool. So kudos on the weapon skin change. That is fantastic. And, you know, I think that's smart, even from a business standpoint. I think that will increase uh, sales of the weapon skins. Knowing if people know they can take it off again, they won't lose it forever. I think that will incline, you know, people to go ahead and buy them. Um, so that's sweet. Uh, so let's see what else they did here. Any other major changes? They did some fix for character profiles when they were not displaying correctly if the character had elemental accessories. Okay, looks like just some small bug fixes here. Um, pets and soul badges can now be viewed in the character profile. That's always a nice thing. They improved the, uh, you know, that little BNS TV uh, icon that comes up so you can watch their streams. They improved it so it now has an audio only mode option which is kind of nice actually so you kind of listen while you're playing if you want to listen to the stream um and now it also says dungeon overviews can now be posted to chat with a clickable link you know that's kind of nifty nice little uh small change there um there was one other change i wanted to mention in here though there were some class changes I'm not going to go through all the class changes. Uh, very minor, minor changes. I will say, except for Blade Dancers. Uh, Blade Dancers, you got some nice buffs in there. Go ahead and check out the patch notes for those. Uh, Blade Masters, you got a slight nerf on Dragon Tongue, which is, I guess was kind of a long time coming. That was a very powerful spec. Um, I don't think anyone will lose too much sleep over that, given how it probably was due for an adjustment. But the... Um, but yeah, Blade Dancers, you got some nice buffs. So good stuff there. Actually, this is cool. This uh, person has the uh, Alice Alice uh, hairstyle on, the Alice bow, and mixed and matched it there with the, um, the that Black Ram outfit that you can get from the... Uh, is that from the Narrows that you get that outfit? I can't remember who you get that from now. But uh, yeah, that was a cool-looking outfit, so... Um, so yeah, good class changes. Uh, pretty minor things all around. Except for, yeah, except for Blade Dancers, pretty significant buffs there, and uh, Blade Masters, slight nerf, um, and some other minor changes. Summoners, they did change some things, but it looks like just kind of mostly quality of life things, line of sight issues, a couple minor bugs fixed. Um, okay, one other change that I think is another thing where they've listened to players on this one and I think this is another excellent change, is they changed the pet system. I want to look at this. Because um, I have... So I have an Untamed Lycan pet here. Now... What they did... Let me just read the patch notes here. It says, Pets have been redesigned into two separate items, the pet aura and the pet. The pet auras retain the attribute bonuses and can be upgraded in the same fashion as they were before. 
but the pets are now applied to, replaced on, removed from pet auras to change the visual appearance. If desired, pets can also be equipped directly for a small HP buff. Pets can also be converted to sealed pet enhancement stones via transmutation. Okay, that's, that's how they were. But basically what I think the goal is, is they want to separate the appearance of the pet from the stats of the pet, which I think is an excellent goal. So basically the pet aura is the stats and the pet is the appearance. So that's actually really, really nice. What that means is you can, you know, upgrade the pet as much as you want, or the pet aura as much as you want, and maybe like a couple months down the road a new pet appearance comes out that you really want. You could just slot that into the pet slot, and that won't affect the aura. The aura should be a separate item. But I'm wondering why... Yeah, so it basically, yeah, so it says existing Hongmoon and heroic and legendary pets can be salvaged to receive the pet aura and the pet item. Ultimate pet auras can be transmuted to an unleashed pet aura, so apparently there's even a new level of upgrade you can do for the, the pet aura for at the ultimate level. Um, a heroic pet aura can be purchased from the general goods tab of Dragon Express for 10 gold and 3 pet enhancement stones. Okay, so that's what I saw there when I pulled up the Dragon Express. So it looks like you buy the pet aura. Oh crap, I don't have three. Dang it. It looks like you buy the pet aura. And then you can... Oh wait. Aha, here is the heptagonal. Uh, just real quick while I have this up. It is 40. Okay, so it gives you 5 extra attack power for the heptagonal over the hexagonal. So if you grind up the extra 250 coins, you know, there you go. That's what you can get. Um, but just looking at where... We still got the stones. Yeah, there's... I'm not seeing where you transmute the aura, or does it, I'm not quite sure, I wish I could buy one just to see how this works. Yeah, how does the pet aura item actually work? Hmm. Well, it does, I'm reading through the patch notes. It doesn't give an excellent description. It makes it sound like you should be able to... Do you salvage the pet aura? Do you salvage the pet? Hmm. I don't know. Do I want to do this? All right, I'm going to do it. Okay, I did it. So it gave me a pet aura and the pet. So supposedly I could, let's see if I put this here, what happens? Oops, let me let me just go over here. So you see I got my lichen pet right here, right? So I equip the aura, it goes away. So there's no graphics. So if you just want the aura and not the pet, you can do it. But I thought there was a way to... What if I upgrade this pet aura, but I still want the lichen pet? I'm not quite sure how to do that. Oh wow, it makes it tradable again. Uh... Okay. Interesting. So it's buying an equip once you salvage it. Hmm. Not gonna lie, I'm still a little bit confused about this. That's nice you can have the aura, but what if you want to have... Like, what if you have, like, a really upgraded aura, but you still want to have your pet visual out? 
How do you do that? Hmm, pet appearance can be applied and replaced and removed. Pets can now be applied to replace and removed from pet auras. Do you so you apply the pet to the pet aura? Ah, okay. Ah, oh, okay, 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 okay. So, I gotcha, gotcha. So once you have the pet aura, so you upgrade this as much as you want. Then you could shift click on it. Then you can take the pet you want, put it in there, and apply the appearance. Looks like it costs three gold. And then it will take on that appearance. I see. And if you ever want the pet appearance back, you could just salvage it. And it will give you the aura and the pet separated. Nice. Okay. A little bit confusing. Sorry about that. I hadn't played around with it yet myself before working on this video. So, um... Sorry for fumbling around there for a little bit, but that is how it works. So you got to salvage the pet. You get the aura and the pet appearance. The aura is what you then upgrade, right? And then you can apply, like later if a new pet comes out, you get that pet, you could uh, apply it here, and that would apply that pet visual to that pet aura. And then you can still equip it. The thing that's nice, I think it's actually really cool, is if you just equip the aura, you don't have to have a pet at all, and you can still get the, the stats. That's actually kind of nice. I mean, if you just don't want a pet hovering around you at that, you know, at that, you know, if it's getting annoying to you for whatever reason, sometimes it is. Sometimes it turns pets off if they're getting in the way visually. So that's nice. So the new pet system is excellent. So, so yeah, first anniversary, two really good quality of life changes there with the weapon upgrade visuals. Uh, yeah, the weapon visual system now where you can get your... Uh, uh, the skin back and use it again and now the the pets where you can separate the pet visual from the aura and have the stats and pets different again that's really smart business i uh decision i think from ncsoft because that's really showing them that uh they're really you know trying to figure out why what's holding back people from buying pets and you know if you upgrade your pet you, you know it's very expensive to upgrade a pet to legendary and let's say you know a couple of months down the road a new pet comes out and you really like how it looks, you're pretty much screwed. Um, it's really hard to change. You know, with the current system, you can. I think there is a way to do it, but uh, it's a little bit less intuitive. This way it works quite well. You just salvage that pet, so you get the pet aura. You, when the new pet comes out that has the visuals you want, then you just get that pet and apply it to your existing pet aura that has the stats on it. So works well. Still, I think, a little bit more convoluted than I think it needed to be. I would say they should just add another item slot here. Have one item slot for the aura, one item slot for the pet visual. And there you go. Done. You just uh, keep the, the pet aura there for the stats, and whatever pet you put in the other slot would be the visual. Done. No fusing or unfusing or any of that stuff going on. But still, much improved over the, uh, over the current system, that's for sure. Um... Just a couple other nice changes here in the patch. Uh, they did make some changes to items here, going through these. It looks like they uh, increased drop rates on the legendary accessories from 4 and 6 man, Desolate Tomb, Iban Drake, and Naryu. Very nice, I know a lot of people are complaining about that one. It's hard to get your uh, legendary accessory, that's for sure. I don't know how much of a increase it is, but hopefully it is substantial enough where people will be able to get their legendaries. I'm still not up to that level of play, so that's doesn't really affect me, but it's good to see. I like them seeing anything that's increased in drop rates is a good thing. Because, you know, who, you know, reducing the grind is never bad. Um, increasing drop rates on Titan skin, increasing drop rate on foraging orbs, increasing drop rate on Petal of Lament from yep, all good stuff. Increase the drop rate of Naryu tablets from all Heroic Silver Frost dungeons. Okay. That's pretty good. Um... Looks like also, uh, let's see what else is going on here. We've got increase the drop rate and quantity of refining stones from Expert and Heroic. So I get that from the blue and purple dungeons. Uh, Sacred Logni Key is now available from Premium Membership tab in Dragon Express. Not actually sure what that's used for. I'll take a look at that. Uh, forging Orbs can now be purchased from the Daily Challenge tab of Dragon Express. Okay. That must be for Heavenly Energies, then. And it uh, looks like the Antidotes, Mass Revival Charms, and Escape Charms have all been consolidated into a single item. 
instead of having different items for each region. Oh, okay, okay. That's kind of cool. Uh, that's uh, re maybe save you a little bit on inventory slots, kind of combine that all into one item. That's nice. Um, it looks like there are some PvP changes in here. Uh, basically, it looks like they kind of increased uh, Zen Bean rewards, um, in particular during the, uh, the Battle Frenzy time periods for each of the areas. So for duels, tag matches, you know, they have different time windows when you have the frenzy going on. For Beluga Lagoon, Whirlwind Valley, there's a different time zone. So um, just play during the frenzy times. and looks like you're going to get anywhere from a 25% to a 50% buff to um, Zen Beans or Battle Points. Okay, and the new season started. So yeah, that looks like it's pretty much it for the patch notes. Lots of good stuff there. Excellent light quality of life changes. And, um, yeah, I like that, those changes that really make you feel like you're being listened to as the player base. All right, so let's finish up here by taking a look at the Hall Moon Storm one last time. Um, they added all kinds of new goodies here. Uh, limited time. Interesting. So evolve stones? I don't know why you'd want to buy evolve stones. Those are, well... We have all kinds of new things. We've got some new outfits. We've got the Tide Runner Cheshire Cat outfit. Oh, we should take a look at that. Um, all kinds of good stuff going on here. But yeah, make sure to get your first anniversary gift. Let's take a look at this new outfit here, uh, Shangri La. Let's do details. Wow, a new uh, headdress too. Let's take a look at this, and let's put the headdress on as well. Wow, is that a unique hair as well? I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking this. Two new unique hairstyles from the uh, head pieces. And man, this is a really detailed outfit. Look at this thing. You've got like semi-transparent like lace going on. You've got all kinds of dangly. Lots of unique geometry. So this is a pretty cool looking outfit. You got like the fur going on. Lots of different textures. I really like the orange to gold fade there. The trim looks really nice. So pretty fancy outfit, that's for sure. So Shangri-La and the headpiece looks cool too. Um, here it is on the Lin. <laughs> the headpiece is pretty funny. That is some huge pigtails. That's pretty funny. Let's take a look at the Gan. And then the gin. Looking really good. This is a pretty nice looking outfit. A lot of detail all over the place on this thing. A lot of work was put into this outfit. Let's take a look at the males. That is pretty sick. That looks really good. I really like the like the the drawn on texture there. It almost looks like I'm not sure. It almost looked like a dragon, but I don't think it is. It's like uh, just like a landscape or something, I guess, like clouds. This looks really cool. Man, this is... That glove looks awesome, too. I like the tide, uh, the wraps around it. That is a pretty sweet-looking male outfit. Looking really good on the gone, too. Even looks pretty good with the ponytail. Uh, Lynn... Not bad. You got a cool headband going on there. Those, I don't know if I like the uh, shorts there with the boots, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that looks really good on the males. So this is a pretty fantastic outfit. Um, for most, so this is actually part of the uh, um, the last week rotation that went up. Oops. I do got to show you this one really quickly. It's basically your Indian outfit, but <laughs> although I don't know if it qualifies as an Indian outfit. It's basically a bikini with uh, Indian accessories attached to it. Pretty much looks exactly like the summer outfits. But uh, it does have a pretty fancy headdress, that's for sure. Let's quickly do this one, because this is actually not part of the anniversary event. This is from the past, uh, just the weekly rotation that's been going on. So this will be around, I think, for another week quickly show the males as well <laughs> i don't know not digging the male one too much the female one was okay well that is a really thick headdress a lot of feathers going on there 
But uh, yeah, that one is actually, so yeah, not part of the uh, event. Unfortunately, I can't, I don't think I can preview this Item one. Um, yeah, at the very end of the video, I'll switch over to my summoner just to take a look at that because I think this Cheshire Cow outfit is kind of supposed to match the the Alice in Wonderland outfit that's part of the anniversary event. Um, so I do want to take a look at that. Let's uh, take a look at the Snapdragon weapon. Ah, nice. That's pretty cool looking. Has the white glow to it. Little feathers coming off. Kind of neat. I don't know if it does... I don't think it's going to let me... Oh, it does. Okay, let me look at all of them. Wow, check that out. The sword. That is sweet. Look at that. It has like a particle effect on it. Nice. That is a really cool looking for Blade Masters. Um, gauntlet. Eh. I really like the particle effect. That's really cool. Although it doesn't really look like something you really punch someone with. But there you go. The staff. Nice. Okay. So this, this is a really good weapon skin too. Man, they really did it, outdid themselves in the cosmetics this time around. Holy cow. Look at that. Really cool glow effect going on. That is the Force Master. We looked at that one. The axe. <laughs> Uh, the, don't know if I'm liking it. It's basically a butterfly. It's kind of neat. Uh, not sure if I'm digging this one too much, but it does have the cool particle effect. Um, got the dagger. Nice. Pretty simple looking, but uh, I like it. It's like a minimalist look. It still has the cool glow effect on the blade. Fortunately, you can't preview the holster. There's a Lin Blade, looks the same. There's the uh, Razor, same, same. And it looks like you get also 13 Anniversary Coins. So this is a, this is a pretty expensive pack, 4,000. That's, that's expensive. Um, but you do get all of the appearances, so that's probably why it's so expensive. But uh, you do get the coins too, that's nice. Did, did you get any coins? You know, you don't get any coins with the outfit. No coins with that one either. But I want to see, was there one other new outfit? Okay, so these are the packages you can get. Um, wow, 10 coins. Okay, for only 160. Hmm. There's possibilities. If you've got some Hong Moon coins sitting around, can you get these? Yes, you can. How about these? Honorary ornaments, you get 11. You want a Twilight Flower? 21. Not too unreasonable. The 160 for 10? That's, you know, that's within the realm of possibility. Get a couple of Venture Tokens. You can get some of these. Stack up on uh, 10 Anniversary Coins. That's not bad. All right, let's go back and see if there's anything else. So those are the bundles you can get. Those are kind of, you know, along with the Anniversary event. I'm sure they're only temporary. Um, Sunflower Weapon Pack is there. Tide Runner Weapon Pack. Bamboo. Looks like they brought back these previous Weapon Packs now because of the new Weapon appearance system which is really good nomad is this or imperium i'm not sure one of these is from the event and one of these is already there from the previous week rotation let's take a look at these i think this is the one from the anniversary wow that's a well that i mean it's pretty cool looking at all it just it looks like a like a formal dress it looks like a formal wear dress as a really long dangly there, that's kind of neat. I like the color scheme. I like kind of the fiery orange just red look there. Nice, I like it a lot though. The headpiece is kind of interesting. Um, I think... I don't know if this is a unique hair. The, the back of the hair looks like the other ponytail that already exists, but I think the the bang bangs and the um, sideburns are these new to this, to this headpiece here. Let's look at some of the other ones. That actually looks quite similar on the Lin. And the Ganya looks, this one actually looks quite similar across all of the races. I think the formal wear definitely looks best on the Lin, or the Yoon, sorry, because of the, uh, they have that more elegant look going on. Let's take a look at the males. <laughs> So yeah, there's the male. It has the kind of the jacket hanging off. Uh, it's okay, I guess. 
I didn't like it as the as much as that Shangri-La one. That one was really slick. But that's pretty cool. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> I like the little top knot there. That's kind of neat. Yeah, the top knot. The hair is pretty cool for males. All right, so there is the that outfit, and one more outfit to look at here. This is the Nomad outfit. I think this was, yeah, this one was definitely already in from the past week rotation. So, um, to just go through this one real quickly here. Not, uh, it's not really related to the event, but it is going on right now. It is a unique outfit, but uh, kind of. A little bit boring, just kind of purple and gold, not a whole lot going on. Um, let's change to male. Pretty cool looking on a gun, actually. I like that with the shoulder strap going on. Yeah, definitely. That one looks the best. Um, and then looks pretty similar to all the other ones. All right. So there are the different outfits. And I think anything else new in here? Yeah, I'm just looking at um, Yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything in the new patch. All right, so last thing here, I am going to um, change over and take a look at the Cheshire Cat and we will call it a video. I have to say, very good event, the first anniversary event. I mean, not a whole lot of new content, but a lot of good quality of life changes. Um, and some very good, um, um, yeah, very good rewards for the event. And like I said, just even if you're not interested in doing any of the event or anything else, just log your character in, even if you haven't logged in for months and get that free outfit, um, which is really, really cool. and. Um, yeah, definitely worth it. I mean, just just, <laughs> just log in, do it. Even if you have to re-download the game, it's probably worth it just to log in. I mean, most of the off outfits usually go for, like, what, 15-ish bucks. So, you know, it's, it's worth it. And it's a cool-looking outfit, so. All right, so here we are. Let's take a look at the, the cat outfit. Let's do it this way. Let's pull up the details. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, that's not what I was expecting, I have to admit. That hat is pretty awesome. The outfit itself, eh. Oh, wait a second, check this out. Oh, let me see if I can zoom in on the belt thing. Oh, hold still, you stupid cat. Does that say eat me and drink me? If that says eat me and drink me, that is pretty awesome. <laughs> that is sweet. Because those two little potions that, uh, yep, from Alice in Wonderland, that is pretty fantastic. I'm not loving the outfit itself, honestly. Now this tail accessory, that's pretty cool. That uh, that matches like the chains on the Alice in Wonderland outfit. That uh, that definitely gives me that Kingdom Hearts vibe. I like it. But And this hat is pretty epic, too. It's like the Cheshire hat grin going on so i don't know it's it's there it's yeah i'm not super digging the outfit itself but i like the nice little touches they got with the uh eat me and drink me potions the hat the tailpiece is pretty cool so there you go there it is the cheshire cat outfit for your pet on your summoner and that pretty much does it for the patch everyone um and the first anniversary event there is the sign so Yep, I think that's a good place to call the video. Hopefully you found this informative and you'll be able to participate in the one year anniversary. I think it's um I think it's it's well worth it. Uh it's really good rewards, you know. And you can, you know, get the rewards, the daily coins just from doing normal dungeons you normally run, Silver Frost Dungeons. So all around a pretty good event. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye for now.